This Week in Science and Education is presented in association with the Science Coordinators and Consultants Association of Ontario. Visit their website at sccao.ca. This Week in Science and Education is brought to you in part by the University of Western Ontario, www.uwo.ca. We thank them for their support. This Week in Science and Education is also brought to you by Laurentian University. Check out Laurentian at Laurentian.ca. We thank them for their support. All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Science and Education, Episode 67. I'm here with our panelists, Colin Jago. Colin, you want to say hi? I do. Hi. And Thomas Merritt. Hey. And our guest today is Sashta Nukovic from the uh, Canadian Young Scientist Journal. Sasha, why don't you just jump in and tell us about the journal? Hello, uh, um, in uh, to be, uh, basically it's um, the only um, scholarly publication entirely dedicated uh, to original high school student research. Uh, so uh, you see, um, we managed to get um, among NRC Research Press publications uh, with um, high school student ideas, uh, basically uh, accomplishing impossible. Uh, we uh, fit in um, in professional community with uh, people who uh, got no education and um, bare uh, enthusiasm. It started in 2008, um, one uh, in uh, Toronto, and uh, it kind of snowballed um, in nearly a year, it becomes a national publication. It now uh, published in um, English and French. Our publication goes to every secondary school in the country. Um, and um, it, um, it actually a forum for high school students from across the country were getting submissions uh, in uh, English and French. Um, and we have a uh, two-level um, editorial process. Uh, we have a student editorial board, which does initial selection of papers. Uh, and then, then papers go to, um, to a peer review process. Uh, they are reviewed by PhDs, uh, experts in the field. Um, uh, uh, the paper doesn't go uh, PhD review. It's not published. So, that's, that's the idea of the job. But it's much than um, just a publication. Uh, our goal is um, different um, uh, research-based education. It's a new dimension for high school students to open up and uh, basically reach out into academic and engineering and um, well, uh, professional community. There are a lot of different things that, that this publication is going to offer people that, that students that are trying to publish there. How do you sell it to people? What, what is, what's the main advantage to a student of, of putting the publication in, in your journal, or is there a, an advantage? Are there a series of advantages? Uh, I believe that um, uh, there is um, uh, interest on the student side to get um, academic publication before they go to university and kind of get a record of uh, uh, something um, they accomplished. But um, there is something more. Uh, journal in invites students and teachers to approach education through a different door, where students will uh, pursue um, their own investigative interests and teachers um, acting in a different role. In, um, they are mentors and partners instead of be, well, uh, sometimes um, pushers of uh, learning. So um, that's, um, that's where we see maybe the biggest interest in our uh, publication. So uh, students uh, uh, having a chance of um, lead their own learning um, and uh, develop their own education around their own interests. That's that's what I personally believe the most interesting for students in our uh, journal. But that's great, Colin. That, that is that is great. Uh, thank you, Thomas. Sasha, um, did I did I understand you uh, correctly earlier when you said that that your publication goes to 
uh, every secondary school in the country, or, or do secondary schools have to subscribe and, and then you know pay for the publication before they can sort of get a sense of, of what's in it, and then whether or not they'd like to participate? How does that work with, with, with your average high school? Uh, it goes for free. Um, we are a non-profit organization, and uh, um, we are kind of managing uh, still now uh, to find uh, support. Uh, oh, it's not easy. Uh, uh, we are finding advertisers on uh, for our covers, and it uh, basically covers our basic expenses uh, for printing and uh, distribution. And uh, our journal goes directly to science departments of every secondary school, francophone, anglophone, uh, private, public, uh, Catholic, every secondary school. So science teachers and um, the academic students have a chance uh, to see and, um, let's say, um, to learn uh, from, their, from their peers. That's right. uh, by motivation and by example. Wonderful. How many how many issues a year do you, do you send out? How many articles do you publish in a year? Um, we um, we get on average over the year over hundred article over hundred submissions. Uh, but through the selection process, selecting um, let's say 15, 16 articles, and we publish two issues a year. Um, twice a year, uh, which are connected to the beginning of um, school semesters. Uh, one is in September, another one, a new uh, issue is coming now in February. Uh, that's, um, well, uh, last year we had an extra issue uh, because of overwhelming number of um, uh, uh, bio and um, environmental papers. Uh, so we had a special bio issue following uh, with support of um, Sanofi Pasteur. Is the only option for students to submit these papers and uh, submissions themselves, or do teachers recommend it often? Is there an infrastructure in place for that? Well, uh, nearly all the submissions we get are uh, student initiated. Although uh, sometimes uh, I personally am impressed by the level of uh, um, well, uh, research uh, equipment, which uh, which is uh, behind the um, paper or manuscript. Sometimes I, I simply uh, don't understand where the students and how they manage to get, especially with some medical research, uh, they seem to have access uh, to such a wealth of resources, uh, which is totally overwhelming. Uh, yeah. When we started it um, at one school, um, it was um, uh, it was also uh, an idea of um, giving an opportunity for immigrant youth uh, to see a pathway into uh, professional careers, and it was all done uh, basically with, uh, with no resources. One paper was uh, um, on on physics. Um, Mechanics. Uh, and another guy came with the idea of, uh, and actually got the positive review from Princeton on the math apparatus uh, based on bubbles he um, observed in the uh, tank of a school uh, aquarium. Uh, that's <laughs> that's how he developed his um, math uh, concept of um, shortest path calculation. So he was looking at the bubbles and uh, came with the concept of the shortest path. So um, one other aspect which I believe is extremely important about um, this type of publication. There is one submission which is not going to be published, but I want to uh, tell a short story about it because I consider it is uh, very interesting and um, reflective of the value of the journal. It's an uh, article about the different proof of the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, it didn't stand the review from the Princeton University. Uh, well, said that there is nothing new uh, in the proof. But um, what I believe uh, was uh, interesting and what is uh, really valuable in sense of um, 
people are they are not just take ownership of their own research. They are we can say reinventing, but it's much more. They are inventing their own. Uh, they are as valuable as um, as big science. Uh, they are doing and accomplishing as much as um, adult physicists. And this feeling of accomplishment makes a huge difference in their own self-evaluation, in their own, own self um, it changes them so much, uh, which results in them taking a different path in their um, post-secondary career. So they will be scientists regardless whether they will go into science or not. Yeah. That's a really great point. I, I don't think you can underestimate what it's going to mean to the students to, to have published in, in the journal. Um, the, there were two things that I, that I wanted to say. Um, one was, I think, just the idea of encouraging students to write things up, publish it, defend their ideas. This is one of the hardest things that we, we face at universities, is getting undergraduates to actually commit to an idea and defend it. And you're getting these high school kids to do it. That, that, that's fantastic. Um, I wonder if you could give us a little bit of an idea. If, you, if I'm a high school teacher and I want to get my students to, to write something like this up, where do I start? Uh, I, I was on the web page for the journal a little bit earlier today, and, and it looks like there are example issues that are there. So there, there are issues that, that, that the teachers can go in, read them, get an idea of the format. How do you get kids excited about doing this uh, in the first place? Well, um, it's, it's, uh, you're asking the most difficult question. Um, besides um, articles, um, we have uh, uh, teaching resources. We have um, uh, lesson plans for teachers. Yeah. Um, it will be great if we will have more teachers who are interested in in creating invention um, and um, let's say paper writing uh, in their classes. And yeah. it's not um, always. It's it's not um, it's not about writing manuscript. If, let's say, if somebody considers that it's uh, too much, um, well, it's up to school and teacher to decide whether they would like to develop it to the point when students actually submitting um, their papers. But to incorporate um, this um, element of um, student uh, independent uh, research and um, pursuit of the invention, that is uh, something which um, which is quite rare, unfortunately. I understand how uh, teachers are overwhelmed uh, with the curriculum and um, yeah. uh, expectations they have to reach and cover. I, I'm saying that, um, you see, it's, it's, it's not really in teachers' mentality to leave it to students to go on their own yeah. and to reach uh, the expectations of the curriculum. Yeah on their own. It it's actually um, takes a lot of courage on the uh, teacher's side. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why uh, I believe that most of the submissions we're getting, it's mostly independent student research. I, I was just at a, a conference over the weekend, and, and it was a, a rowing coach conference, but a, a couple of the people at the table uh, were high school teachers. and, and one of, the high, one of the teachers is an English teacher. I ended up talking with her about trying to convince high school students of the value of, of good writing. And it's one of the biggest things that we struggle with. With We get science kids that, that can't write a paragraph. Um, and something like this journal might be a really good way to, to get a couple of different teachers interacting that you've got a science teacher that's excited about the science and you've got an English teacher that needs to, to convince kids that they have to be able to write a complete paragraph and you can only get this published if you've got good science and you can actually present that, communicate the, the material. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to interrupt for a quick second here. Sorry, Sasha, you can answer that question in just a sec. We're just going to take a quick break to get a word from our sponsors, and we'll be right back. This Week in Science and Education is brought to you by Sheridan Institute of Technology and Advanced Learning at Sheridan Student Shine Brighter. Check out sheridanc.on.ca. 
So we're back with This Week in Science and Education. We're chatting with Sasha from the Canadian Young Scientist Journal. And uh, Thomas was just talking about the importance of literacy and being able to essentially effectively communicate your point in writing and science and how it's kind of a dying art these days. So Sasha, do you just want to talk a bit about the role that uh, the importance of literacy plays in your journal? Um, it's, um, it's critical. Um, you can be successful um, engineer, you can be successful uh, programmer, you can be successful um, scientist if you can't express yourself. Uh, and actually, it's um, it's one of the um, let's say keystones of the education. It's it's there, um, and we uh, as a journal we are offering this opportunity. And maybe maybe teachers should consider uh, using uh, the journal as the um, as an, incent an incentive, or like an um, invitation to students, saying that please. Um, consider that uh, it's not the school assignment you're doing. Um, anything you do could be published. Please yeah. submit. And um, yeah. it That's will be fantastic. circulated n not just to schools, because our journal is also circulated to Abscabras. Uh, everybody um, who is Abscabras uh, subscribers I, as the Ontario College uh, teacher, um, I get access uh, to EBSCA um, and I have, I, I see the journal um, in the catalogs and I have access to it. So basically universities and the academic community, anybody curious uh, can access it online. That's interesting. I hadn't thought of that part. That's, that's a really interesting uh, connection right there. That you can access it with all of the other journals that are online. And I think that's that's a key point. I was thinking, Sasha, about about the things that we very often do in high schools, and I'm I'm a secondary uh, high school science teacher, uh, as my background as well. And I'm thinking about the connection between things like doing projects that end up as science fairs, and doing projects and research that end up as written up as a, a research paper that goes into something like your journal. Can you maybe talk about the things that be are similar and things that might be different in that kind of an approach uh, for for kids and for teachers? Science fairs, it's a, it's a great um, ven venue, um, and we are working very closely with Youth Science Canada, the organization which uh, runs um, science fairs at the national level. Um, I still believe that um, we are kind of adding on to science fairs um, experience. Uh, to come to science fair, you, it's enough to um, to demonstrate something which was already accomplished. To get published in our journal, you have to show that you made one step forward and prove it uh, to professional community. It doesn't mean that you did this um, on on let's say on a global scale. It can be very small, but your own original thought. And this is what um, I believe is most important uh, to develop uh, in high school uh, and, among, uh, and among, uh, students. Unfortunately, I see a lot of attention, not unfortunately, I see a lot of attention and incentives provided for uh, science at elementary and middle school level. And when we get to a high school level, it somehow, uh, this attention somehow disappears. And this is a critical age, and this is a critical time when they are making their post-secondary decision. It's important to give them um, their own incentives, gives them the right to choose and take this pathway for themselves. That's, that's what I believe in. More. I think that's a, that's a wonderful way to, to look at the difference between the science fairs, especially science fairs in middle and elementary school, and what happens in secondary schools, and, and maybe a change towards publication of science in secondary schools is something that we can look at instead of science fairs or as an addition to. So I think it's a wonderful idea. Uh, I know that uh, the journal serves um, some role for secondary education. Um, sense of um, getting 
this publication as an introduction of uh, author to academic community and also, uh, as I mentioned, um, in sense of this um, student-driven research experience, which is critical, successful for secondary education. Uh, because most of the um, students I see experience uh, this gap between traditional uh, learning in school and uh, they experience uh, in universities or colleges. Uh, when they are on their own and have to be driven by their own motivation, not by teaching. You know, it, it's it's one of the things that, that we deal with at, at the undergraduate level, but it's certainly an issue, and, and my two graduate students are in the room should stop listening. Um, it's something we, we deal with, with with graduate students. I mean, our education system is not really tailored to make independent thinkers, but when I have somebody that comes into my lab to, to do a master's or even to do an undergraduate research project, I insist they work on their own. And, and actually, I, I, teasing these two grad students aside, I've been really fortunate. And, and part of that is I'll only take students that can think independently. Um, but we're not, we're not doing a great job. We're not doing as good a job as we could do in creating those independent thinkers. And something like this, where you've got a goal to students who say, look, you can publish, you can see your work in print, but to do that, you have to communicate your ideas, and those ideas have to be independent and novel. That's pretty exciting. That's a neat thing. Well, um, uh, and, and still we're working actually quite alone. Uh, we, are, we will be happy to have um, teacher community um, and university community um, getting on board and uh, working with us uh, um, more closer and uh, it, it's actually a plea. I'm, I'm calling for um, teachers community and uh, academic community at university level uh, to help the journal and um, pay more attention to uh, students which um, congregate around our publication because um, we 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 are, we are kind of into uh, we are trying to unite and um, foster this um, this way of um, uh, uh, this potential of. Uh, uh, future researchers, engineers, inventors, those who will be a potential master and PhD students for universities, those who will probably uh, be um, value for the society. This is our focus and, um, and, uh, and this is our challenge. So um, I would uh, be happy to see more teachers uh, joining us and more uh, universities um, uh, reaching out and uh, looking at uh, our um, reviewing publication, reviewing papers which we are uh, getting uh, from students. Excellent. Uh, it's been a great discussion today, guys. We should start wrapping things up. So, uh, Colleen and Thomas, do you have any last sort of thoughts for Sasha before we wrap up here? Uh, I, my last to, point was just no. I'm sorry, go on, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, just to it, it's it's such a unique approach um, to to a problem that I think we've all understood in, in that sort of getting students interested in science and then continuing that long term. And I know I, for one, have a couple of projects in the back of my head that I'm going to look at incorporating with uh, this kind of thinking and maybe partnering up with you. So uh, expect an email from me shortly <laughs> about something that I think we might be able to work on together. Uh, I would love to see uh, this email, and uh, I'm happy to work together. Uh, actually, um, uh, I would happy to see you on the teachers' uh, uh, editorial board, and um, we, we, we need uh, passionate teachers. Uh, and I'm uh, really um, grateful for Vero uh, for what it's doing, because and I have big expectations because I esteem that. that um, uh, I'm actually also planning the teacher to use a bureau of resources uh, to carry out some of these research-based uh, education in the school I'm at.
So I have a secret agenda here. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Anything else from you before we go, Thomas? Let me just say thank, uh, thank Sacha for coming on. This is fantastic. It's a great journal. Looking forward to seeing more of it in the future. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Excellent. Thanks so much for being with us, Sasha. And as always, thank you, Colin and Thomas, for being on This Week in Science and Education. We'll see you all next week.